Easy fermented pickles, no canner needed. You can make a small batch and you do not have to process them. My name is Jersey. Thank you for visiting today. Let's jump right in and make some fermented pickles. Even if you do not grow your own cucumbers, you can buy them locally all year round like I do when I'm not growing them. But if you do buy them, make sure you get the non-GMO kind that's organic. Even those, these are already organic. I always wash all my produce with our veggie wash. I'll leave the link below. And this is our big stick veggie wash that we make and sell for the last 25 years. I am currently selling it on Amazon. And it's very important to wash all your produce before you go to consume it. Bleached cotton towel that I use for everything. I'll leave that link below too. So I just take a little bit of soap, wet it. You only need a little bit, and then I'm gonna hang it to dry. You don't need to add a lot. The best thing to do is have a designated scrubbing vegetable brush like I have here. I am placing them in my sink, which I just recently bleached. I make sure everything is sanitized. Since we are fermenting, we do not wanna pick up any bacteria or anything that can grow while it's sitting on the counter fermenting. Everything needs to be sterile. This water I will not be saving. I'm going to dump it out because it could have some harmful bacteria or something in it from the store to my home. So I will dump that out. Rinse really well. This water I will save. This is a jug that I like to save my recycled water that I use in the house so I can take it directly outside and pour it on my garden plants. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just try to get as much as possible to save water. I just pat them dry. They don't have to be 100% dry. I wash them really well because I do not peel these when I make my fermented cucumbers, fermented pickles. It is your choice how you would like to slice them. I admit, someday I do slices, someday I do wedges. You do not have to boil your filtered water, but I like to because then I am ensured that the sea salt will dissolve completely. Make sure that the water is room temperature before you put it on top of the cucumbers. I already went ahead and made some. I highly suggest putting a plate or a bowl underneath it because it will seep out because the gases are being released and it makes it bubble. That's what makes it ferment. So you will need something to catch the liquid underneath. Very easy. Slice or make wedges of cucumbers. Put them into your jars. You can add hot peppers, fresh dill, dried dill, garlic, whatever you want. Then you will add brine to fill up the jar. Add your weight, your silicone fermenting airlock. Add your ring. Let it sit on the counter between five and 10 days. We are in the beginning of August and it has been hot. So I let this sit five days. It is done. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator. You can see the little bubbles, bless their heart. They fermented very well. And then these, I really, really love. They're leak proof. Now let's talk UV jars. I only use UV jars because I have a commercial refrigerator with a glass front and light gets in. Irregardless, even if I didn't have the commercial refrigerator, I definitely use the UV jars. I don't want the light getting in on the food that I'm fermenting that's sitting on the counter. Less light means better food. If you want to try fermenting for the first time, you do not have to buy this fermenting kit for years. I did not use any of these. For years, I used just one of these types of jars the only thing I did, I removed the gasket so the air could seep out between the lid and the jar. That's how I still do my sauerkraut, but in a gallon jar, just like this, but I don't seal it. I just lay the ring on top of the glass jar. Again, if you're not using a fermenting ring in silicone, you will have to allow the gases to escape. So if you're new to fermenting and you do not want to buy more products that you might not use. You basically can use any glass jar. It needs a little air. So just, you know, if you want, walk by once a day, just lift the lid, but do not put a gasket on this and crank it shut. Try one jar. What's it gonna hurt? See if you like fermenting. I think once you find out 
that you can do one little batch like this at a time, no canning. Do not have further process this. You put it in the refrigerator and it is done. Let's see how these puppies look. Now for these, I cut them rather large. It's something really different. I think you should experiment and try it yourself. Very easy to make. And a lot of times I don't can pickles anymore. And this is one of the rare times which I try not to push my opinion on something. But if you are not going to buy the glass weight, these are little glass weights that I bought from the thrift store for 35 cents. There are others that may suggest putting rocks in a baggie to weight that down. For one, it's plastic. Hell no. And two, you don't know what's in the rocks. You could be leaching minerals in it. So yes, I'm very adamant. If you are not going to buy any kind of fermenting kit, which is fine, you can buy things like these. this glass. It will wait. I still use it because I only have four of these. So if I'm fermenting a lot of different things at one time, I don't have these. So I will go ahead and use this. This is a little whack jar. You can fill it with brine and it will sit right on top. Once you fill it all up and add your brine, push it down just like you would this, and the brine will automatically fill in these little holes. But again, you wanna keep it glass, no plastic, no bag, no rock. So if you don't wanna go this route, or if you wanna go this route and don't want to buy the fermenting kit, look around your house for something that you could use for a glass weight. Check out the thrift store too. Let me show you what I mean on the thrift store glass lids. Push it down until the liquid overcomes it. You don't want any area that's not covered. You'll need to cover it. You don't want gnats and everything growing in it. So get yourself a piece of cotton or muslin. I'm doing this one-handed so I, I will not be able to tighten this down really tight. And this will allow it to breathe naturally. That's all you really need if you don't want to buy a fermenting kit. Just keep a cover on it. It keeps the bugs out, the gnats out and it allows all the air to come out and you won't even have to burp it. The liquid sometimes tends to evaporate much faster. So you might have to go in and add just a little bit of filtered water. You don't have to go and make more brine if you don't have any made, but that's another alternative that you can do. See, it works easy. Just use what you have around your house. Push on it a little bit. You wanna keep the cucumber submerged. That's all you're looking at and see, I, you could go back and add more water, but you can leave it just like that because you can tell how far the cucumbers are way down here and you have enough liquid. But if you feel safer, go ahead and fill this up with filtered water. Add your linen, tie it tight, and give it a try. How fun is that? Let me know. I believe once you try fermenting, even if it's just one jar every few months and you don't have to can and you don't have to do a lot of work, especially if it's just empty nesters, I think you'll like it and you'll be hooked. I'm going to do a few more exciting ones this coming week, so stay tuned. Thank you for your support. I have a blog about if you have excessive gnats, which a lot of times when you ferment sourdough, it will attract gnat. I'll leave that link below if you'd like to read about it. A little gnat right there, a little bugger. That's another reason why you wanna keep the lid on. And if you're still hanging on, I wanna thank you. You are awesome. Please share, like, hit the comment button, and have an awesome day.